Hello, my most amazing artists. How are you today? Today I have my daughter to say hello. Um, her name is Sophia and she is in 4L. So she's been at Parnassus for a while. Sophia, say hi to my Prima kids. Hello. All right, we're gonna let her get out of here and I'll talk to you more in a minute. I thought you might be interested in seeing who my daughter was because my Prima kids in school asked me about my own kids. And so I told them about my daughter, Sophia, and I have a son, Jacob, but he's too busy right now to say hello. Uh, so I just wanted to have you get to know me a little bit better by meeting my daughter. So today we are going to learn a little bit more about warm and cool colors and a special kind of painting. So let's start off by reviewing what we already learned. These are the warm colors. These are the cool colors. Let's do our chant. Repeat after me. Ahem. The warm colors are rocket red, flame orange, sunshine yellow, the cool colors are lakeside blue, vroom vroom mow the grass green, and vikings purple. All right, good job. Now remember, we already looked at this one, and this was a cool painting, cool colors. Let's see if we can practice the name of it. Ahem. Hunters in the Snow was painted by Pieter Brugel. All right, good job. Now this one. This was our warm painting. Let's see if we can practice the name of this one. Repeat after me. Ahem. Tahitian Landscape with a mountain was painted by Paul Gauguin. Nice job. We also looked at an amazing painting that was abstract art. And this one was called, here we go, Ahem, Blue Atmosphere was painted by Helen Frankenthaler. Nice. Oh, and I wanted to show you something. So remember how this painting was all kind of like colors mixing together? And I said that Helen Frankenthaler had this really great way of mixing in some turpentine and made it nice and thin. And then she would put the paints on and let them kind of flow together. Look at the painting that one of my scholars gave to me this week. I have a student named Eloise and she gave me this painting and it totally reminded me of Helen Frankenthaler's painting. Do you see how much fun Eloise had mixing those colors? She made them watery so they would flow around the paper and they would mix together. Do you see cool colors in this painting? So do I. Purple, green. Do you see warm colors in this painting? I saw the red right there and a little bit of yellow up here. Nice. Good job, Eloise. I bet that was fun. Okay, now, oh, what are we doing? To, oh, today we are going to look at this amazing painting. Can you tell I love talking about artwork? I love this painting. I'm gonna give you a close up look. Wow, that painting is so great for so many reasons. First of all, this painting was painted by a man named Henry, Henry, Osawa, Osawa, Tanner. Mr. Tanner, became known as one of the greatest African-American painters in the 1900s. And he 
was the first African-American painter that was accepted as a national artist with national fame when he moved over to France and was able to show his work in one of their most prestigious galleries. And so Mr. Tanner really made a name for himself. His artwork is beautiful. I want you to notice, first of all, the subjects in this painting. Do you see a little boy sitting on the lap of either his dad or his grandpa? It could be his grandpa, might be his dad, but that man is teaching him something. What is he teaching him? He's teaching him how to play the banjo, which is kind of like a guitar. It has those strings and you pluck them like a guitar. The banjo lesson was also painted in a way that I want you to pay close attention to. The banjo lesson was painted with impressionistic kind of paint strokes. Do you see if I go in really close? Do you see the individual little paint brush marks? Mr. Tanner was really good at doing that style where you don't mix it all together really smoothly, but you leave your paintbrush strokes kind of showing and the light and the dark kind of play off of each other. Do you see how the light background sets the perfect stage for the dark figures and your eye just goes right to them and it makes them stand out as the most important part of the painting? Oh, this painting is so great. So we are going to be inspired by this painting to do our own kind of painting that has brush strokes that you can still see. So we are going to this week take the apple drawing that we made last week and we're going to add paint. Do you see how you can still see the brush strokes on my example? You can still see how the white and the red and they kind of mixed for pink. You can see the direction that my brush went and I didn't mix them all together. I kind of left those brush strokes so that you could see them. That's what we're going to do in the project video. Thanks for watching the art history video. For the last thing before we go, I want to see if you can tell me warm or cool with two different sculptures I'm going to show you. Okay, so the first one is a picture of a glass sculpture. It's actually hanging up in the Minneapolis Institute of Arts, also right by the Children's Theater. If you've ever been there, it's an amazing sculpture. It makes me happy every time I see it. It's called Sunburst. It was made by David Chuhilly. Would you say this is a warm sculpture or a cool sculpture? If you said warm, you're right. Now, here's a pretty famous sculpture. Have you seen this before? I've never seen it in real life. I've only seen pictures of it. I've seen it on TV. It's called the Statue of Liberty and it's in New York. And this statue is really famous. We are going to decide right now if it's a warm color statue or a cool color statue. What do you think? I see that it's made out of like a greenish blue color. It actually was made out of copper and copper turns green when it sits outside. So this greenish color makes this a cool colored sculpture. Good job if you knew that. See you next week.